Good day, boys and girls. Remember back in 2020, the lockdowns? I built this bad boy right here. Nothing but the finest craftsmanship. Yeah, no. I just threw it together because of the, the lockdowns. I needed a radio. So I built the uh, model CV 2020. Now we can't say names here. The government, they don't like, they don't like us talking about that stuff. So this is a solar video. So I needed a battery. You know, this thing here only runs off of a cord. So I needed to build a battery system for it. Enter the CV192023. My battery backup for my radio. 5,000 kilowatts. Now nah, I'm just joking about that too. Listen, built this. We get ice storms here in Oklahoma. It takes out our power for like five days. So I wanted to keep the refrigerator and the freezer going without having to fire up my generator. So I went on a quest to put together a system that would run our refrigerator, our freezer, and the uh, fan for our, our natural gas heater. So that's all I got to get going to get heat in my house. Natural gas is still working. I just need the fan. Enter this puppy right here. All right, let's go over the heart of this operation. The batteries. I got the redodo. And why do you redodo? Because you'd rather redodo than redodont. All right. I did my research. Redodo. Red Odo, however you want to pr pronounce it, I re pronounce it Redo Do, because you want to do get these, because uh, the price was like two hundred and sixty some dollars per battery, and uh, there's like twelve hundred eighty watt hour batteries, one hundred amp, twelve volt, and uh, see it says right there, twelve point eight one hundred amp batteries, they're ready to go. Great price, great value, and it's gonna handle what I need for my uh, power outages. So there's the meat and potatoes of it. And again, you would rather redo do than redo don't. You can get a cheaper battery maybe, but you're not gonna get the customer service that uh, these redo do batteries can provide. All right, following up. I bought these T-Tokus uh, breakers because you can literally just push the button, disconnects everything, put a 250 down here, way overkill, but it's primarily being used for a little bit of safety and to cut the system off. I like the lugs on the 200 amps and above of the T-Tokus, the T-Tokus uh, brand is a uh, three-eighths inch lug whenever you go to 200 amps and above I like that got these bus bars they were cheap got to do a little bit more uh, research they're gonna be fine for me they said 250 amps I thought that was great but come to find out these are just brass nickel plated brass so uh, yeah I'm not gonna be doing anything more than about maybe max 120 amps Max whenever I'm drawing the three things I was telling you about the uh, Refrigerator freezer and the fan for the things. I'm not too concerned with this build It's gonna do fine if I want a cup of coffee or something like that You know, I'm not running them 24 7. So if they get a little hot then they'll cool back down But there was one of my mistakes right there should have looked got all uh, Got all copper all right coming up two more t tokuses a 200 amper again with the 3 8 cents lugs I like that going to my WZ RELB pure sine wave inverter 3000 watts at 24 volts that's right I'm doing a tie in uh, two together in series two together in parallel so I got a 24 volt system over here I got a T-Tokus 80 amp breaker it's coming up to my HQ ST 
solar controller, charger, controller, whatever you want to call it. And uh, a little bit about this HQST is, yeah, it's an off-brand name, but if you look, the great folks at Redodo have a 40 amp controller that looks just like this. This is a 60 amper, and I got it for a little over $200. Now, if you get that, you're not going to get the support that you did from, uh, say, Redote. In fact, HQST, they sent me the wrong tracking number, said it was going to Houston. I don't live in Houston. Then it said it arrived in Houston. I didn't arrive. I kept on. They wouldn't answer me back. No customer service. They answered me back whenever they said, oh, we showed that it showed up on your front porch today. Well, that was like a couple days after it said it showed up down in Houston so yeah you're not gonna get any customer support in my opinion in my experience so if you want to save some bucks go out with this uh, yeah I'll have to show you the box it came into that's kind of funny you can this is a rebrand of another company that bought it from another company and uh, I think the company's Helios maybe makes them I don't know but uh yeah, do your own research on that. Again, great review on it by, there's a guy, let me talk about that. There's a guy reviewed this on uh, the YouTubes, as I like to call it. You know, he wears white gloves, give double fisted punches, pow pow, I don't know. Kinda, you know, sound, he loved it, but I'm sure they were giving him good customer support because they knew he was gonna push it for him, so. Yeah, whatever he had a question, they would probably ask it, you know, answer his calls right away. But uh, gave it a good review. So I'm thinking it's a solid product. It weighs a ton. This thing is built solid. So uh, I don't think if it works, which it is, I don't think I'm going to have an issue now that I don't need customer support anymore. Coming down to the inverter, the WZRELB brand. Very popular, a lot of people get them. 3,000 watt inverter, nice big lugs. I'm only gonna be running about 1,000 watts through this bad boy though. And uh, come over here, got a nice digital screen, shows you the uh, bolts coming in and the AC coming out. Uh, let me unplug this. You've got the 110 outlet. So they say you probably should only use about 15 amps down to that sucker. Then you can run more close to 30 amps off of the tie lines. And I, I marked them hot, ground, neutral. There's no markings for it, but I oh, hit it with the meter, made sure I'm looking really good. But from what I did from my research, everybody's really happy about these and they don't draw too much current just sitting idle they do i mean but not not any more than most other brands so pretty happy with that coming down to my wires got two gauge should handle up to oh 100 150 amps i believe is what it is with the two gauge crimped on some nice lugs which i'll get into that in a second but did that one of my mistakes, everybody's gonna call me out on it, is I need to run this ground instead of coming down to here. Need to run it over here. The power's off of that one. So these all charge more equally. Yeah, I kind of screwed that up. So working on that. All right, on my solar input, got this one uh, with the box and everything. It was about 30 bucks. Oh, by the way, these these are gonna average around $30. This was like $32, $35, let's be safe in saying, to get this uh, breaker. But it's nice, I got it wired up into the controller. The battery charger comes out, like I said here. It's a black cable, but it's, it's positive going down there. I'll get some red tape, I'll, re I'll tape that up too, just so nobody gets confused. Put some heat shrink on it or something. We'll work on that. But uh, yeah, there's the, uh, there's the system. 
All right, a lot of people want to know, you know, what the heck? That looks like a pretty heavy box. And it is, I ain't going to lie. To carry it, me and my wife did, but we don't want to do it every time. So I'll probably take the batteries out next time, take them individually. But how this works, and, you know, let's get this off of here. Put it down on the ground. Okay, how this operates is I have it hinged, all right? So you take it. You lift it up. All right. Then you drop the rod through these. Like that. All right. Well, uh, you can run this. You can run this either up or down. Uh, it's the, the wires are long enough right there to flex cover Let's just show you again here how this works pull this out This is hard to do with the phone, but here you go Hinged down as you can see on this side Plenty airflow. I mean it's wide open so uh, and the heat sinks are up on that controller, so the heat's just going to rise and drift out of the box that way. And there's plenty of gap here from the top for air to, you know, flow in and out around that. Let's come over to the other side. Yeah, see, we got the controller here. Not the controller, the uh, inverter, 3,000 watt, 24 volt, 3,000 watt inverter. Plenty of room, and again nothing but tons of room you know you're safe from hitting any of the uh, battery terminals and uh, hey you can get to all that real easy alrighty you also want to get yourself one of these guys right here say you uh, disconnect the breaker for the inverter it sits for a long time you're gonna get a whale of a spark whenever you connect up these terminals and it'll pit your stuff and it's it will wreak, wreak havoc on it so what you want to do is you want to just touch this resistor to there to there for about say five seconds then lock it in you're not going to get any spark to go and just hurt your uh insides of your of your breaker at all so you want to get that i also do the same with the uh satellite controller when I, whenever i first fire it up then latch that in you know after i latch I, I latch the main first then i'll charge this up latch that one charge that one up latch it and then you're good to go here you go here's uh here it is if you need the information and yeah you, you don't want to run the system without one of those of course Whenever you're doing any of this, you want a good meter. You want a meter that does the voltages and amperage. What you do is you clamp this around your uh, batteries and it'll tell you how much amp is going through that wire there. And uh, this one does DC and it, you gotta make sure they do DC and AC voltage. Cause you know, we're primarily using DC and a lot of them are just AC only. So make sure, this was like $37, which I did my research. There's some other really good ones, about $45. This was $37, and it got really good reviews. It's the Astro AI, Astro AI CMK, CM4K0R. Yeah, it's well constructed, really accurate. It reads like two decimals out on the voltages. So, yeah, I'm really pleased in that. Is it Astro? Yeah, Astro AI. Here's the two uh, panels I'm using. They're just 100 watt panels. So I got a 24 volt system. I gotta get the voltage up a little bit more. So two in series. So that's, you know, the cables coming over go to the positive of this one. Then these two are hooked together. Then from the negative this one, come on out. And it goes, it goes back to my system. And uh, pretty soon I'm going to take this satellite dish off. 
and I'm gonna put uh, some bracing on it so I can track. So I'll mount four of these on there and then I can turn it with the sun and also turn the elevation so it'll be kind of nice. All right, inside the garage, I've got uh, three of these 400 watt panels that I'll use if the power goes down for a lot. Ooh, by the way, that's Elliot, Elliot Sadler's windshield caught on fire while he's uh, qualifying, I believe, at Talladega. I'm not sure, but that's there. Uh, yeah, so I got three of those. So I got 1200 watts there. And uh, if, if I'm just using them and not too intensively, I just throw on the 400 watts of the smaller panels. But, you know, I got 1200. I can add an extra controller to it and uh, actually get up to 1600 watts if I wanted to. So, yeah, I got I got all three of those panels for two hundred and twenty five dollars. So that's like seventy five dollars a piece. That's really good for 400 watt panels. All right, I picked up this uh, Rodoto 20 amp 12 volt charger so I could uh, charge each battery. You want to charge the batteries to be even before the, you put them into your system. What do you think, Dottie? Yeah, Dottie agrees. You got to put this, get every battery topped off, balanced out before you put it in your system. That's very important. Heck, you know, I, you could probably get one cheaper than Rideau do but remember what i say go with rideau do don't rideau don't i figure if i get the one from the manufacturer it's going to be the right one to get they're not going to sell you something that's not good for their own batteries so i paid a little bit more got this uh so i can uh, top off the batteries bounce them out before i hook them all up it's very important uh get yourself one of these also well in conclusion of today's testing and like I said only threw 200 watts on it I can do a lot more now I can easily do 1200 watts of those other panels or 1600 watts if I parallel series those in line yada yada go watch some videos uh, may, I may make a video of that so gotta make sure the voltages and the amperages are just right to be able to mismatch panels but literally I'm only gonna be doing 1200 watt probably the three 1200 the three 400 watt panels in there and uh yeah if anybody has any questions or uh, i'll try to put a list of everything we got here here's a, a dog here keeping an eye on the system and everything uh yeah you're a good dog uh i played around the george can't go wrong with the george foreman that was like 700 700 watt george foreman testing it with that running it down charging it up i again i gotta get the battery that negative bag battery terminal so they're offset i'm I don't know, and i'll do a i'll come back after i run this for a while and do a review on my system maybe show it this uh winter if we lose power do a video while i got everything in use but yeah so far everything's running great nothing's getting warm even with the uh 700 watt you know for the 3000 watt inverter it's just tickling it the cables are all doing just great nothing nothing was getting hot whatsoever so i think i can run a thousand watts without even thinking about any of the uh cables getting hot or anything like that so tests are good uh, if you have any questions you know hit me down in the comments down below uh like i say you want to read a do instead of read a don't do your own research they get you know people love them uh the prices are incredible and uh customer service answer my question right away so i want to thank redo do i'm gonna say or red red odo or redodo whatever it is it's a red it's red red what am i trying to say redo redo do you want a redo do you don't want a redo don't all right well again hopefully i learn a lot from my mistakes in putting this together hopefully you got a little bit of insight of what a system uh, could be probably could get away with a 40 amp charger and just be fine but 60 amp i can grow a little bit i just tickle pink with how this all worked out oh one last thing here hold on
these with a whole bunch of connectors were like $38. And these you just crimp. You want to get a good crimper whenever you're doing them two gauge wires. This will do all kind of gauges, smaller gauges, all the way up to, I think, zero. Zero gauge all the way to, you know, smaller stuff. So get yourself, they're not, you know, the greatest in the world, but man, you can't pull the connectors apart and everything's cool as can be. So it's working good. Anything else? Uh, oh, along with your voltmeter over there. Along with a good voltmeter. I got this thing. It tells you how much, you know, AC you're drawing out of it. So I can monitor that. And uh, my refrigerator was only, in 24 hours, was 1,000 watt hours. So I'm really pleased with that. That means my... I'll be able to charge during the day and keep everything running that I think I'll be using. I think I'll be under a thousand watts total. If everything's kicked in at the same time, you know, a hundred on the freezer, maybe like 200 something on the refrigerator and uh, the fan kicking on every now and then to run the gas heat is like 500 watts, 400, 500, somewhere in there. So yeah, nothing's going to be, that sometimes they'll all be running. But they're all turning off. It's gonna be colder, so the fridge is out in the uh, garage, so it it'll be it won't be kicking on too much. And the refrigerator, it you know you know how they are. They kick on, kick off. Uh, I should be able to make it throughout the night on this. I've got some uh, jackeries with the lithium-ion uh, batteries. I don't I've got 200 watt panels for those, so I can throw those in there too. They're they're the older battery, uh, lithium technology, so it takes about five hours for them to charge back up. So I can charge them during the day, use them at night also. I think I easily can make it through the, uh, the nighttime and then back into the day and, you know, be pu pulling in enough sun to charge. I have less than 20, since this is a 60 amp charger, I got four batteries. That's less, that's like 15 amps, uh, Char so I'm not hitting the batteries hard. That's why I went with four also, more capacity. And also, uh, less, you know, only 14 amps going into each uh, battery. They recommend 20 amps, you know, to charge them. So I'm underneath the recommendation of uh, 20 amps. So I'm not gonna be hitting them hard, probably keeping the batteries lasting long. That's it guys, uh, you know, I'll, I'll follow up on this. Again, battery terminals, make sure they're all uh, copper. Make sure everything, your wires, 100% copper, good stuff. I'll put in the description, not the description, yeah, the, in the description, I will put where I got all this. That's going to take me an hour because, but I bought some other stuff too. And uh, yeah, I found out that I probably shouldn't have gone with that stuff. So I got some leftover equipment, uh, learned from my mistakes. I'll throw everything I got in here uh, and I'll let you know how it all works out do some more testing and uh, yeah if, I'll do a video if I use it this winter when the power's out well knuckleheads back to you and have a great day and uh, good luck with your solar projects